Close your eyes. Focus on your breath. Watch the breath as it comes in. Watch it as it goes out. There's nothing else you have to do right now. Just be with the sensation of the breathing. And if, it's, if it doesn't feel comfortable, you can change the rate of the breath. Make it longer or shorter, deeper or shallower, heavier or lighter. Whatever feels right right now. And the important part is making up your mind that you will stay here. Because the mind is often like a committee. It's got lots of different opinions, lots of different ideas. Part of the mind may be interested in doing this, and part of the mind may want to think about something else. Then there's just the fact that things come up in the mind from your past actions, old habitual ways of thinking that you didn't decide on at this moment, but they come barging into the mind. You have to make up your mind each time that that happens. You're not going to go with them. You're going to stay right here with the breath. This is an important skill you need to develop, is learning how to say no to things that come up in the mind. Because all kinds of stuff comes up, good, bad, indifferent, good, bad, indifferent, over and over again. And if you can't say no to the unskillful thoughts, you're going to get into trouble, because it's going to start coming out into your words and start coming out into your actions. So this is one of the reasons why meditation is good not only for you, but also for the people around you. Because you learn how to say no inside. You learn how to make that no stick, so that you, just, you stay with skillful thoughts, because there are plenty of skillful things you can be thinking about, how to be kind to other people, how to be compassionate, how to be kind to yourself in a way that's wise. All of these things are good things to think about, and the mind should have the energy to think about them, so you don't want to have it wasted on thoughts of anger, thoughts of ill will, thoughts of getting revenge, because this is something that happens all the time. People come into your life and they do things that are unskillful. They hurt you with their words, they hurt you with their actions. And there's that temptation to want to get back. But that doesn't really do anything, because that just keeps the cycle going. That becomes more karma for you. It was their bad karma to do that, but now it's your bad karma for the way you react. So learning how to say no to your mind is an important skill. The Buddha recommended two qualities that are especially good for this. He said one is a sense of shame, thinking about how their kind of action was a low action and you don't want to stoop to their level. In other words, you're not. So you just say, no, that action is unbecoming to me. That's I'm a better person than that. That's what a healthy sense of shame is. Sometimes we're told that shame is a bad thing. Well, that means being shamed of yourself, thinking that you're a horrible person and not feeling any goodness inside at all. That's not what the Buddha is recommending. He's recommending that you have a very high sense of self-esteem. And from that sense of self-esteem, you look at certain actions, you realize they're beneath you. Other people might do them, but you're not going to stoop down to their level. In other words, their bad karma comes to your feet and you just let it drop right there. You don't pick it up and throw it to the next person, because then it becomes your bad karma. That relates to the second one, which is otapa, the feeling of compunction. In other words, realizing that if you do something unskillful, bad results are going to happen. If they don't happen immediately, they're going to happen down the line. And so you just realize, I don't want to have that happen. So if you know that something's going to lead to suffering, if you act on greed, aversion, and delusion, or if you act on passion, aversion, or delusion, if you act on ill will, if you act on desire for cruelty, all these things are going to come back at you. And the question is, do you really love yourself? And if you do, okay, you're not going to do anything that's going to cause bad consequences down the line. So if you can keep these two principles in mind, the principle of healthy shame and the principle of healthy compunction, that takes you a far away on learning how to say no to all the unskillful things that come up in the mind. And as a result, they don't start coming out in your actions or they don't start coming out in your words. And that way, other people benefit too. So this principle of training the mind, teaching it how to stay with one thing, now to say no to any impulses to go someplace else. It's an important skill. It's very basic, but it's like all the basic things, they're really important. The more you focus on the basics, the better foundation you have for the other qualities in life that you want to develop. To so learn how to develop the mindfulness and alertness to keep you here, and that sense of shame and compunction that allows you to stay here, Under, uh, understanding why we want to stay, because we want to develop as much skillfulness in the mind as we can. The more skillfulness there is in the mind, the better your actions are going to be, the better your words are going to be, the better the world in which you're going to live. So try to keep these points in mind, because as the Buddha said, they protect the world. They protect the world you live in. They protect it from your own defilements, and they protect it from your bad karma. That's the best protection of all.